It is Thursday, October 22nd, 2020, and you are tuned into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Today on the show, we've got details on the World of Outlaws late model weekend cancellation. We preview this weekend's fall nationals action, compare winner start position among the four big series and more. But first, this episode is brought to you by Blood Lubricants. Blood carries a high-performance line of synthetic racing oils, and they've got you covered for all sorts of dirt racing applications. Engine oils, gear oils, suspension fluid, cleaning products, you name it, they've got it. Make sure to check out their Pro Series gear oils. ASCS Regional Champion Joshua Shipley uses it, and he says he's never seen a gear oil perform the way blood does. After eight races, he drained the oil, and it was clear and looked brand new, and it doesn't stink. Blood has a great racer support program that offers discounts on products plus free swag, and they support hundreds of racers across many divisions throughout the country. To check out the support program, find out more information, or to buy, visit bloodlubricants.com. That's B-L-U-D, lubricants.com. If you'd like to receive 25% off, off most products use code dirt at checkout that's d-i-r-t all caps at checkout we were supposed to get two world of outlaws late model events this weekend at kokomo speedway and federated auto parts raceway at i-55 but the races have been canceled due to a poor forecast for the two days saturday's world of outlaws sprint car event at kokomo is still on as scheduled fans and teams who had armbands from the hoosier dirt shootout at kokomo will receive a refund visit worldofoutlaws.com to see the instructions on how to get your money back the only remaining races now for the world of outlaws late models are the two nights of the last call event at Charlotte November 4th and 5th. The Fall Nationals Late Model Series is in action this weekend for two shows. They take on Tri-County Racetrack in North Carolina tonight and then head to Sonoya Raceway in Georgia on Saturday. Both shows are 10000 to win and 500 to start. The six uh, race Fall Nationals have already had two shows in September at Smoky Mountain and Taswell. Mike Marler won at Smoky Mountain while Don, uh, Donald McIntosh won at Taswell. Vic Hill and David Payne are tied for the series points lead currently. With the World of Outlaws canceled and Lucas finished, I'd expect some pretty heavy hitters to be in attendance both nights, especially with some nice money on the line. For those unable to attend, both races can be watched live on Flow Racing with your subscription. The 2021 World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series schedule has yet to be released, but we've learned about a few dates here and there thanks to tracks releasing their schedules for next year. Houston Speedway will host the Outlaws June 21st and 22nd, and again on August 22nd. The Outlaws head to Jackson Motorplex for the Jackson Nationals June 24th through the 26th. In 2021, the five events between June 21st and June 26th that Houston and Jackson make up with the tracks are calling the Showdown. If a driver can win the finale of both events, they will get an additional $100,000 bonus. Uh, Sheldon Hoddenshield and Kyle Larson won at Husets this year, while Brad Sweet and Logan Schuhart grabbed Jackson wins. The full World of Outlaws schedule will be released soon. Speaking of the World of Outlaws, they head to Kokomo Speedway Saturday for the fall fling. The night will also feature non-wing sprint cars, and we know two drivers will be pulling double duty with both Chase Stockin and Paul Nienheiser planning on running both races on the night. Nienheiser and Stockin will be teammates for KO Motorsports at the event. Stockin has been with KO Motorsports all season. Running double duty is something Nienheiser has already done this season, and he's had some success doing it. Back at Tri-City Speedway in August, he won the night's MOA feature and finished second in the war sprint car feature. Nienheiser has 10 outlaw starts in 2020 with a best finish of 13th at Wilmot in July. Stock and race with the outlaws at Hobstadt in June, finishing fourth on night one. The non-wing wing crossover is something I actually just talked about with Chad Baseflug on the Dirt Tracker Conversations episode this week. Now we'll get to see it twice uh, in one night. This Saturday's World of Outlaws event at Kokomo will be live on Dirt Vision. We'll do a full event preview on tomorrow's show. I talked yesterday on the show about some Lucas stats, and I put a few of them out on Twitter yesterday as well. The stat about where race winners start in these events always seems to spark some discussion, and I did have a reply to that tweet yesterday asking for a comparison to the World of Outlaws sprint cars. Because of that, I wanted to dig into the four series a little bit more and do a comparison of race winner start position between Lucas, the World of Outlaw Sprint Cars and Late Models, and the All-Stars. As I mentioned yesterday, 25 of the 47 Lucas winners came from the front row, which is 53%. 10 winners came from outside the top five, which is 21%. For the World of Outlaws Late Model Series, 22 of the 38 winners started on the front row, which is nearly 58%. The furthest back a winner has come, or excuse me, 
Yeah, the furthest back a winner has come with the Outlaws in 2020 is eighth. Only three winners have, have come from outside uh, outside the top five, only about 8%. In the sprint car world, 30 of 51 World of Outlaws sprint car winners have started on the front row, which is about 59%. Six winners have come from outside the top five, or about 12%. The furthest back a winner has come with the Outlaws uh, in 2020 is 10th. That was Kyle Larson on August 13th at Knoxville. With the All-Stars, 23 of 48 winners started on the front row, which is actually less than 50%, actually about 48%. Only six winners came from outside the top five, which is 12.5%. And the furthest back a winner started was seventh. I believe it happened twice. I think a big factor in the start position distribution for race winners in these series is the number of laps in the features. Lucas averaged the longest feature this year at uh, just a little over 53 laps. You know, more laps certainly gives guys coming from the back more time to get to the front. Uh, McCready's win from 20th with Lucas was in a 100-lap race. The All-Stars averaged the shortest race at nearly 32 laps, but they actually have the lowest win percentage from the front row, which is interesting, uh, as you would certainly expect that to be much higher, um, you know, based on that kind of theory of longer races, meaning uh, more, more passes and, and more winners coming from deeper. I think it's important, though, to note that, you know, the difference with the All-Stars is that number of winners from third is much higher than any other series. So if you add in third place starters, the winner came from the top three spots almost 69% of the time with the All-Stars. That puts them right on par with the other series, actually puts them second on the list. Uh, I think regardless of car type or format, it really still pays to just start up front. The racing is so incredibly tight. Teams, drivers are just so good. Uh, you cannot start deep in these fields and expect to win races. And unless you're going to switch to some sort of like bonkers feature inversion format, this distribution just won't change much. You know, the Outlaws used to do heat race inversions. The All-Stars do heat race inversions now. And the numbers just aren't that different. I um, mean, you can, you can see that with what I just mentioned right there. So I think, you know, this, you know, format versus car type, you know, all these arguments that seem to go on about, you know, what's the best way to create good racing and things like that. Like, how, how much do you want to penalize, you know, somebody who qualifies well and, and somebody who, you know, finishes well in a heat race? Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. And like, I know Pennsylvania does a lot of inversions and things like that. But, you know, I just I don't think that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, putting fast guys in the back, like, you know, you're going to end up with guys playing, you know, games and qualifying and heat racing and trying to, you know, finish in certain positions to get better you know chances at a better draw for the feature I just I just don't think that makes sense I you know I, I'm okay with the formats the way they are and I'm okay with these distributions you still see you know plenty of opportunities where guys are going to start you know further you know in the field and still come to the front and you know we had a, a situation this year where Brad Sweet was hard charger and won a race so um, I just you know I don't think that stuff makes sense but I think these stats are, uh, are pretty interesting if you'd like to see more of these stats you can certainly find those at dirttracker.com slash analytics there are a few items on the streaming schedule for tonight. Flow Racing has USAC 24-7 and the aforementioned Fall uh, Nationals Late Models from Tri-County Racetrack in North Carolina. Race and Dirt has the 41st annual Spooker from Tri-State Speedway in Oklahoma as well. To see the full list with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope everybody has a good Thursday. You can find Dirt Tracker daily on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or where you get podcasts. Please subscribe and leave a review. You can also watch the show every day on YouTube and Facebook. You can email the show at info at dirttracker.com and you can follow along at facebook.com slash dirttracker, twitter.com slash dirttracker, and the website itself, dirttracker.com. You can follow me personally on Twitter at Justin underscore Fiedler. And don't forget to sign up for the Dirt Tracker weekly newsletter. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.